What's happening everybody? Welcome back to the World's Worst Fishing. I'm your host Chris Jones. We uh, recently broke our own rule and I took a few custom orders. Um, it was really fun actually and um, now I have to make all this stuff so I figured I would take you all along for some of the fun um, in sort of another bait blog. Um, hold on, gotta try to open this beer here with one hand. Yeah, got it. So, here we go. Ah, it's so good. Shout out to Brent Hashimoto, Hashimoto Concepts for the t-shirt. If you are not checking out his podcast, Made to Cast, you definitely need to check it out. But um, we're doing a, a couple of big swim baits. We're gonna do uh, a lot of stick worms, just old school Cinco's. We gotta do some lizards, and we gotta do a bunch of the Angling AI bot worms. Um, and I'm probably forgetting a few things. Um, oops. So, here we go. So this is always cool when you have a lot of swim baits lined up. I just think it makes for a cool visual. So one of the things I did was I did, oops, um, a lot of these sort of emerald shads in the four inch. And a lot of times when we're um, cooking swim baits on hot plates, you know, pouring them, pouring them hot, you'll get a little bit of flashing around, you know, the hook slot inserts. Um, so what I like to do to clean that up, oops, let me uh, straighten these up here. What I like to do to clean those up and to clean them up quickly is actually melt them away, right? Blast them with the heat gun. And so what I'll do is I'll take the heat gun, turn it on, kind of let it get hot, right? Let it get, let it get hot enough for, you know, maybe 10 seconds to where it's glowing red. And then I'll basically just kind of run it down the line of baits and just kind of torch off any little leftover fringy pieces that may be there in that hook slot area. And, and then basically I'm done, you know? I, I want to be careful not to overcook it. You know, we don't want to melt away the bait, so to speak. But, you know, now if we look at it, we have nice, clean, uh, there's one little tiny piece left right there in the front. You can see it right there up next to the blue. But what that does is cleans up your baits. Um, so if you've ever, you know, wanted to know a little trick about that, um, that's how I clean up a lot of baits at one time. So while these uh, four seven and a quarter inch molds are heating up, uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and mix out our plastic. And then I promised everyone in the last video that I would show them my blue craw recipe um, the one that uh, a lot of people responded uh, and reacted very well to. Uh, so I'm going to show you that exact recipe um, kind of during the course of our bait blog and pour a bunch of bot worms. So that might be coming up next. Only plastic we use around here. Dead on plastic, baby. Here we go. Let's get her mixed up. It always goes so out of focus. There we go. I love it. This this part is the equivalent of starting your engines. We are getting things ready for ready for battle here. We're also going to be using craw tube on those big Mondo swim baits. So we'll get that one started. Mixing up as well. Right on. All right, here is the blue crawl recipe. Everybody get out your calculators and notepads. And uh, here we go. Shake it thoroughly. You have to shake it thoroughly. Shake, shake, shake. Get you the best results. <clears throat> one measuring cup of plastic. 35 drops blue crawl. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 13, 14, 15. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. 31, 32, 33, 34, and 35. 35 drops, okay? One drop, Lureworks Thalo Blue, or any dark blue that you have. One drop, one drop of black. Gotta be careful. One drop, okay? That's the color base right there. That darkens it and adds a little bit of blue hue to it, okay? 
So it'll look a little less aqua green and it'll look a little bit more dark blue because you're adding dark to the base and you're adding blue to the base. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to heat this up, probably vac it real quick to get the bubbles out. And then we're going to add our flakes, which really sets it up. All right, now time for some flakage. What I like to do is use a large size black flake. All right. So that is the 0 0.062. That's like the really big stuff. It's not the giant stuff, but it's considered big. And then I have a medium black flake. This is 0 0.035, okay? Just kind of add that to taste. And then, because it's blue craw, I like this little size blue flake as sort of a complement to the blue. All right, so here's a quarter teaspoon. We're just gonna use like a fraction of that. Okay, just like that. Not a ton. And this is the sexiest blue craw recipe I've been able to come up with um, based around keeping it blue. You know, you can add other colors to it and uh, try your luck there, but this one has turned out great. And uh, a lot of you were wanting to know exactly what the recipe is. This is it. All right, now we're going to pour a few, for the, uh, a few of these for y'all. I think what I'll do is do like a sped up time lapse here. It's so hard to get it in this narrow cavity around a camera tripod. This is miserable. I'll try another one. Yeah, looking good. All right, we're gonna lay down some veins and uh, then move on to, uh, I don't know, maybe some more blue craw. Oh, we need to show you all those. And then we might uh, start on the lizards. We gotta do kiwi, the new dead-on kiwi color in the lizards, which I think will be super awesome. The kiwi color is amazing, yeah. This is our gray gizzard shad color, which we actually featured not long ago on video. All right, let's top one off for y'all. We'll go with the uh, first one here. Contestant number one. Yeah. Beautiful color. Perfect. Can't do it any better than that. There it is. The gray gizzard shad. Okay, the blue craw bot worms. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and pull one. Yeah. There it is. You can see the nice kind of brown to blue fade. And with those assorted flakes in there. It kind of gives it a lot of texture. You have the complimentary blue flake in there. And uh, I just think it makes a particularly pretty, pretty take on an awesome pigment. I mean, the, the blue craw and the kiwi pigments are absolute must-haves. And so is this worm. The, the AI bot worm mold is a must-have in my book. I would recommend it to any bait maker, no matter what they were doing. No matter what style of fishing they like, you got to get this mold. This and probably the open pore ribbon tails. Like if you like worm fishing one bit, yeah, look at that. There it is. That's the blue crawl recipe. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, starting to line them up here. 
Got some more down there and more in the molds. So I think it's about time to uh, see how our seven inch gray gizzard shad turned out. Gosh dang laundry. Yeah, there it is. Gray gizzard. More laundry noise. One of my all time favorites. All right, perfect. Look at that. I love how it's kind of green, brown, and silver all together in the tail. And uh, this is a recipe, sorry, lighting's a little tricky. This is a recipe that we did, uh, I think maybe two videos ago, when, uh, when we did a video on tilting molds to show how you can kind of use gravity to pour different patterns. Um, this was the color that we featured, so yeah. Really happy with the way that those turned out there. Sorry, I'm trying to keep everything in focus. Looking good, looking good. That is the Angling AI seven and a quarter inch open pore swim bait mold for reference. Poor little four inch mold. It looks so tiny now. There we go. Sweet. <clears throat> Hope the customer will like those. I sure know I do. All right, it is the next day. Uh, a little bit of laundry noise in the background, so for that I do apologize. We did do some late night pouring last night in the 5 inch, and we did our hologram shad. Right, so when you look at it from certain angles, you see this really trippy hologram effect. And that is from a uh, hypershift pigment in the vein, and sort of the reflections, right, off of the clear belly. So earlier I mentioned um, that sometimes when you pour baits on a hot plate, whether it's um, you know the, the uh, fishing all out or the pancake griddles, you can sometimes get this little tab, right? That little flash. What I like to do is just kind of run my thumb along the bottom, just run my nail, and just kind of peel that off, right? So just like you see there, peel that up, all right? That way, it's a lot cleaner of an edge whenever we go over it with the heat gun later. You know, and, and really, if you're pouring things hot enough to get a good bond, you're going to get a little bit of that uh, hook slot flashing. So if you're not getting that, chances are you're also not getting a great bond. You know, a mold that's hot enough to bond your layers uh, effectively is hot enough to flash. So, anyway... Yeah, looking good. Yeah. Lots of hologram effect happening there. Pretty cool. So I'm out here like panicking. The drumsticks are gone. They're missing again. I don't think it's Landon's fault this time. I cannot find my drumsticks. I have no idea where they are. I can find my uh, practice pad. Can't find the sticks. So gonna have to uh, gonna have to go out to my parents house to my old stick bag in the old drum room and get another pair but won't have any drumsticks today no drum rolls I do apologize okay next up is the one and only angling AI lizard mold okay we're gonna be making some lizard in the new Kiwis color all right so I got to make approximately 30 of these so two measuring cups of plastic ought to get us there, and um, that's coming up next. I'm excited to see this bait in another one of the uh, new awesome morph colors. So looking forward to that. All right, here we go. Kiwi lizards. Oh, got to open the bottle first. <laughs> dum, dum, dum. Sorry about all the laundry noise, y'all. Drives me insane. All right, so let's get that stirred in. Looking good. And sort of like the blue crawl, I do want to darken it with a little bit of a black base. Okay, so we're gonna do two drops of black, since two cups of plastic. And uh, just like with a color shift powder, 
adding a little bit of black to any changeable effect I think only helps not a lot just a smidge yeah I think that right there is working nice all right and now the two different sizes of black flake this is what the guy wanted so you know you could actually do this exactly like I did the blue craw and maybe hit it with a little bit of small green in there and sort of have the same version of the kiwis as we did of the blue crawl earlier. I think I want a little bit more black flake, but that is the color right there. All right, here we go. Let's get, a, let's get at least one run of these in and see how they look. Just got a little six ounce injector here. Just plenty for just one hit of the lizard mold. I wish I had a couple of these lizard molds. Just have one for now. So we're making them three at a time. Got to make 30 of them, so 10 runs. Which uh, we should we should get through that no problem. So looking good, looking good. I think these are going to be sweet. Yeah. Right on, right on. Looking good. We're gonna keep cracking along at these. Yeah, here's round uh, five, I believe. Yeah. All came out nice and neat on that one. All right, hologram shads looking good. Just look at all the effects you get you get out of it. Awesome stuff. Hope that's coming through on camera. Yeah. There it is, blackout eyes. Looking good. Yeah, and here are the kiwi lizards. Big, giant, giant handful of lizards. Hold them up, you can see the green, right, in the light. They look green come down here and then you get to see the browns come out so uh, yeah lots of cool uh, color changing effects there it's a changeable color it's one of their morphs and uh, man just what a what an awesome pigment so yeah that's exactly 30 of them they're uh, still on the runners right so we could actually remelt some runners and get a lot more but uh, 30 was what we needed, so yeah. What do you guys think? All right, so we're probably gonna save the stick worms and all the Cinco's for another video, because that's like a ton of stuff. Uh, one more thing I do have to make is a color that I call Emerald Shad. And I know a lot of people on uh, Instagram and Facebook were um, asking about that color. So we're gonna do that one. It's actually, it's actually a silver belly emerald chad and uh, I'm gonna show you a quick color build on that and then we're gonna wrap this one up all right so the belly color on silver belly emerald chad is of course a silver belly so we're gonna start with some dead-on snow shine okay which is just a really kind of brilliant white pearl all right but not a lot as you can see still keeping it pretty see-through all right now, to make that silver, you guessed it, we need to introduce just a smidge of black, okay? So let's try one drop to start. There's one drop, okay? That's gonna charcoal it up and kind of turn it into now a silver pearl, okay? Sorry, we got a lot of uh, bubbles that we're stirring in here. All right, maybe one more drop. One more, maybe a smidge more snow shine, okay? And this is gonna give us our belly color, which is now a really nice, brilliant silver pearl. All right, and here is a better look at it. Nice silver pearl belly. So that is color number one. All right, so for the vein, a little bit of gold pearl. No, uh, no surprise there, a lot of my shad colors use a gold pearl base for the uh, vein colors, okay? But what I like to do with this one 
is I like to change it with brown. So we're going to do two drops of brown and you'll see that it sort of takes the edge off the gold and to me just kind of richens it up a little bit. It almost has an orange hue about it. And so that to me, just that subtle little change um, coupled with the silver belly and then the and then sort of the green pearl top to me just makes a nice a nice little palette of colors uh, makes a good shad color so that's the vein all right the top color we're gonna do let's see six drops of black one two three four five six okay and then just sort of this kind of green emerald um, mica powder here and dead on makes a really cool color it's one of their paragon colors uh, called emerald city you could you could basically use emerald city and then add a little bit of black to it to get the same thing but this is just kind of how i do mine here i guess so yeah a little little bit of this green powder all right and let's kind of see where that gets us it's a it's a dark color you know a lot of my shads and a lot of shad colors in general you know they really go heavy on the white pearl for the bellies or clear see-through bellies hologram bellies this one having that kind of charcoal silver it, it it just changes the whole vibe it's a very dark color um, but it's a very very good color so anyway that is the top color so Need to cook that a little bit, but that's basically it. All right. Let's uh, top one of these off for y'all. Here we go. Looking good so far. So I just realized I never showed y'all what that last color looks like, the, the silver belly emerald shad. So you can see sort of some of that silver uh, tint there in the belly, that gold vein, and then the green top. It's a lot like my green color shift shad um, that I make a lot without the color shift. So this is a little bit just darker version of that without the color shift effect really really nice and and those four inches that i was showing you earlier were, were the same thing the ones that we did right at, golly this won't focus right at the beginning of the video so um yeah anyways there it is i love the snow shine effect there in the belly you can see how it just really glimmers so yeah cool stuff Hope y'all have enjoyed. All right, we're gonna wrap this one up. That was a lot of stuff happening. Um, so yeah, that was my last two days of bait making and we're still not done. But uh, going to a Christmas uh, church service tonight. So I don't have all day. So you know, I gotta kinda clean up a little bit and go get a shower, put on some nice clothes. So um, yeah, it is the season. But uh, anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed the video. Um, definitely try out the Blue Crawl the blue crawl recipe also try out the kiwis recipe and uh let me know how those work out for you um two awesome pigments again and um yeah cool stuff hope y'all enjoyed the bait blog leave me some comments down below like subscribe hit the notification bell we will see you in the next one